No, Max, we're not naming him Jumanji. What? Oh, that. Oh, yeah, I posted this. That's true. <laughs> Why didn't you say it out loud? You're on the show. I do. I, I do am. Like in the commentary in the background. You're one of three people who can talk. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, why did you join the silent peanut gallery? I, I, I'm a very shy person. I'm. I'm not. At, okay. I'm not all about this loud and boisterous behavior. Uh, but on that note, hello and welcome everybody to the awkward cast where A and Y and Keyframe wonder about random drivel and what this guy's name is. Something with J. Jacynthia. <laughs> it's Jacynthia. Jacynthia. <laughs> we should we we should when we put this podcast on on YouTube we should title it featuring Jacynthia and Jacynthia. nothing and it oh. was like is that a singer? <laughs> I I can do that. However, you need to spell it out for me. So please put it in our Discord it's conversation. It's literally what you think it's spelled like. Oh Jesus! Ja this is horrible. I love it. <laughs> Yes, I know. Cynthia with J. Ja. <laughs> it was like Jamarcus, because Jamarcus is spelled That's... the same way. <laughs> oh like god, this... we went with J A. At... <coughs> My name doesn't have a J A. In Fine, it. then you're oh. Jo Cynthia. Jo Cynthia. <laughs> jo Cynthia. <laughs> what if we? What if we tried to combine, like, make it not two words combined into one, but actually one word? So it's like. Jacinthia. Jacinthia. Yeah, Jacinthia. Jacinthia. <laughs> Jacinthia. Hey, it almost sounds like there's King in the name. <gasps> Which, by the way, hey guys, this is King Moosh or Joe. Yes. Uh, Whatever Joe, his name might be. <laughs> we haven't had you on in a hot minute, so mm -hmm. why don't you tell the audience who you are, what you do, and why should people care? Hello, everyone. Uh, I am King underscore underscore Moosh. <laughs> uh, uh, that's that's what I am on Twitter, and it's a running joke that I can't get the king underscore moosh one because some guy's just camping on it and has wait, never wait. used it. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, cool. But I, you know, general kind of content creator. You know, I mo I stream oh, on yeah. Twitch. I'll do. I've done videos for YouTube, but as but I mentioned in the asshole. pre show, look at this. I'm he joined. He joined very early on. I'm not sure how old Twitter is, but 2013. Oh wait, no, yeah. this is not that early. But still, I right? hear relatively old profile. Two followers. He has two. Is one of them you? No, no, but it is probably people who have found him six. through me, because I've mentioned like, oh, I haven't been able to get it. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, you were saying when did it? Uh, Twitter started in 2006, 17 oh, years okay, ago. okay, okay. So it's not really one Twitter of the first. But 2012 hour. is when it really blew up. I mean, remember, Facebook was fa was alive for a couple of years before it started getting big so true, true. everything's relative but 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 yeah everybody go to twitter and follow king underscore moosh that, that was the right one right but yeah anyways you'll find it i'm the more popular one that's for sure <laughs> the other guy has never tweeted once we gotta so. change that we got it. What? No. <laughs> we we have to we have to account ratio your account with the no! original. Someone someone gets into the king underscore moosh one, uh, and they just decide to start ratioing me. <laughs> Derek get Twitter, Derek get actually a, gets in and starts ratioing you like how no. he does with random tweets from like twenty twenty. Oh man, that but hey hey, that bummed me out. That would bum me out. Don't oh, do that. okay. Somebody we clip it and send. To somebody clips this and send it to uh, to the uh, digger Dan. That uh, man, that seems like something he would do. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, like stuff. the thing is, is that didn't like a couple days ago he quote retweeted a Duncanville like promo post from like 2019 and just put ratio i like, think so they're... that's that he definitely ratioed someone recently that was like that yeah like that's, it was yeah. it's, I, he's such a weird gremlin person but anyways yeah. joe what's been going on recently with you i i know you have the talk lock and everything but please we don't do our own lives anymore your life is on display right now so I, I've been I've been pretty occupied getting a real world job 
Like, Ugh. I, I, the, yeah, I, I, an office job, something I've never actually worked before. Um, I hate people who uh, do that. <laughs> doing office jobs? Yeah, that's the worst. Oh, good thing you guys got me this week and not next week. I start my job next week. I mean, maybe uh, for fun. Oh, then we'll, then we'll hate you. I, yeah, I, then I can never be back. Maybe for context, I'm getting close to my uh, uh, 10 years in my office job, so... Mm, oh, gross, okay. gross, gross, gross. Yeah. But outside so, of your office, office job, what have you, like, what's, uh, what's some stuff in the internet world you've been doing? I... The last thing that I did that was kind of my own... Because mostly it's been, you know, friend lock related, as you mentioned, doing the talk lock and the friend lock box, which, for those who are familiar are sort of connected things to the friend lock a series that chrissy and i are a part of uh run by salty dk dan and they're sort of uh supplementary material where uh, it's it's streams that are everything that happens outside of the actual streams but the last thing that i've really done of my own content was probably the pixelmon streams that we did um for the latest server uh i, I haven't had a lot of time to do streaming recently i've been in a little bit of a break i guess um till yeah, life so... finds balance once again yeah god i i've been playing D, &D but that's not on streams hey <laughs> but D is cool what are what class are you are you a bard a paladin uh my class is dungeon master <laughs> oh you're a dm disgusting a DM. hey look if no, anyone no, said no, I'm saying this as someone who usually DMs games. Uh, yeah. Mostly because people are like, look, you're either the DM or you can't be a bard because you always pick like a super obnoxious character as your bard. And I'm like, but that's why I'm a bard. That's in, what makes me live. In combination with that, I know specifically Gerber and I have been talking about like a couple other people in our group uh, have been discussing like ideas for streaming like a one shot or something that i would dm so that that's something that could be in the works that might happen hey, eventually there you go. yeah well, we definitely yes. want to do it as to when is really the question yeah well i'm glad things are moving and shaking for you but thank with you, that thank you uh i know that you brought a little thing to show and tell today something called a uh, morph anime so, oh what, gosh, <laughs> morph anime actually does sound like an actual it anime. Does, I honestly, don't like it. well, when you said it, it made me think. Oh, I wonder if people have heard the name Animorphs, which is spoiler the actual name of the thing I wanted to talk about, and uh, thought it was an anime because it begins with Anna, and then it goes into something. The anime means I animals. I mean, it's a fifty-fifty chance. You either get degenerates who think it's anime, or normal people who are like oh anna is the prefix for an animal <laughs> or yeah or i feel like the majority of people who are like oh i saw those books in my library and i liked looking at the covers and then they didn't realize that the covers are hiding very intense very, yeah. stories honestly <laughs> yeah so i should are you i gonna like pull up an animorphs thing max uh i i, I guess so um I'm saying, should I give like a a brief summarization? Give of us what an it elevator, is? yeah. Give us a synopsis, elevator pitch of Animorphs. So Animorphs, for those who are unfamiliar, is a uh, a decent length in actual like book number. I think it's like fifty something books. That is like a young adult kind of uh, teen um, book series that is an alien invasion on Earth by these mind control slugs called Yurks and how they are being combated by a group of children who gain the power to turn into any animal that they are able to touch. So, like, if they, they have the power, they touch, like, a tiger, they can now turn into a tiger. They don't need to be touching the animal when they do it. And so it's, it's hard to give all of the details in a good summarization, but really what a lot of people walk away from this series thinking is this should not be for kids. Um... <laughs> I personally disagree. I think it's important to give children a healthy dose of uh, exposure to traumatizing and um, war crime-esque materials before they uh, hit high school. And it really shaped okay. kind of who I am as a person. 
That explains <laughs> so it, much. It's, it's so, oh, so so this goofy ass looking <laughs> covers, which are just like so they Hides actually war crimes. Yes, <laughs> like it... not even in the proverbial sense. Like I think they've like collapse most of LA in like the book like it, it like genuine like war crimes like <laughs> because the whole point is that it is mind control slugs that crawl into your brain mm -hmm. and pilot you but they're able to fully imitate you perfectly because they're in your brain and they have access to all your memories so they don't that. they I... don't know <laughs> I I, I mean <laughs> There, there was a recent very good show from the believe it or not Marvel universe, no, DC universe that actually had a similar idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can name this show without spoiling what's in, in happening in the show. Mm. But very. If you know, show. you know. If you, you know? know, you know, and yeah. the idea is pretty disturbing. Yes, in the best way possible. But please continue. I one of the main characters, just really to give a good example, one of the main characters, uh, one of the members of the Animorphs, which is their, like, group's name, her name is Rachel. She is a child, just like the rest of them. She's the blonde one, if you see any. I don't know if she's any of those covers. Uh, let me see. Doesn't look yeah. like it, no. No, that's got that's got more Marco, Tobias, Jake, Cassie. What about the uh, Rachel you said? Rachel. Oh, my God. She... This picture she... alone is disturbing. <laughs> yeah, they all have like their their like go to battle animals. Um, I believe hers is a bear. I, I see a mouse. Sorry, and... I'm laughing at Netro in the chat who just said Jachel. Jachel. <laughs> Jachel. But, but yes, so she, so what's her she, go to? Her go to, I believe, is a bear. Uh, if I recall correctly, like a grizzly bear. And but a big thing with her is that her whole like story arc throughout the series is how she is like too well suited to war because she likes killing too much and I like she her. Uh, she has to reconcile that she's also like 13 oops and she she learns she enjoys killing people she has a bloodlust <laughs> yeah she has a bloodlust that is almost insatiable uh so God, maybe she should just stay some... as a bear there are some one of the characters so in animorphs if you transform into an animal you have to turn back into your original form so humans for most of them uh within two hours and if you stay in the form for two hours or longer you get trapped as that animal forever hmm. that happens i think in the first book first or second book it happens to one of the members um tobias who gets trapped as a red-tailed hawk uh and there are some, like, I want to make it very clear. This is not a lighthearted series at any point. <laughs> this guy has an entire book dedicated to his perspective where he is dying of starvation because he's unable to hunt anything as a hawk because he knows what it's like to be that prey animal. And so constantly has these almost war flashbacks to being hunted himself. And so he resorts to eating roadkill, uh, which is not, you know, it's just not as good because the meat is, like, contaminated and is uh, less rotting. of it. And, the, yeah, and rotting. And then he gets caught by said Rachel, who is the girl that is his romantic interest. Um, these books are about 200 pages. That's it. They're not long books, and they are so densely <laughs> filled with just <laughs> truly horrific things. And I love it. I love it so much. Here's the thing. I don't even have a problem with all of that. Like, like, okay, there are stories that, that go hard. I mm -hmm. like those kind of stories. The fact that I still have not been able to overcome it, that it's still like... Those goofy-ass covers are hiding? <laughs> all that? I, I, I mean, it's kind of like a uh, watership... I down being in like the children's sections but of this, libraries and blockbusters like looks off. are deceiving yeah but i'm looking at this and i'm like th th this looks like goofy or cheap shit but but it okay, doesn't to look be like fair, though 
this is probably the nicest visualization of what it's probably like to turn into one of these animals from a human. Yeah. Because I feel like if there was a real, if we got like a modern movie with the intended viewing audience with these things, all you would hear is bones cracking and screams of pain. There was there was a show uh, back in the, I think the 90s, um, that I think it ran for like one and a half seasons. I think it got canceled in its second season. Uh, it, it it didn't, you know, it was the 90s, so the CGI couldn't really do the body horror justice, but that's, that's what a, a lot of people who are still like active fans of the series talk about, how if it was made today, they would really need to like go into how it's kind of horrific that they mm -hmm. are turning into another animal. They describe it. Uh, in the books about how they can feel their bones rearranging like they there's a there's a book where they have an ant accidentally get the power to turn into other animals and the ant turns into a human and spends the rest of the time screaming because it's basically being driven to insanity because its mind can't comprehend what it's doing and what's happening to it oh no yeah Oh, That's a fun trip to the zoo. Wait, is... did you find the ant? <laughs> no, I found this thing, and now I have to ask you, uh, uh, Joe, is this fake because somebody wanted to fuck with the series, or is this a real deal? Oh, that one's that one's fake. Okay, I was <laughs> like, this would have added a yet another layer of. Uh... They, they can turn into other people. That is a thing that happens. There's so all right. Later on in the series, they <laughs> they bring in other people as the um as like more animorphs because they basically were like, there's not enough of us. There's only like five of us, so mm. we need to start like a secondary team. So they bring in this kid David, uh, who almost instantly turns on them and becomes in like is evil. But he talks about how, like, his plan is he wants to use the powers to basically, you know, deal from, like, banks and get away as, like, you know, oh, he turns into some other person, then he turns back to him, and then he turns himself into a mouse and gets away. So they effectively trap him as a rat. Like, they keep him in a jar until the two hours are up, and then they f put him on, like, a trash island or boat somewhere and he's forced to live out the rest of his life trapped as a rat the kid was also 13 so yeah, of course <laughs> <laughs> it's all pretty oh yes yeah, someone in uh, enigma in the chat said the book where they turn into ants meet an opposing ant colony and almost get ripped apart yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll, by the way, I looked up the TV show. It ran for two seasons for 26 episodes it, between the September 1998 and October of 1999. Oh, there mm -hmm. was a TV show. And it, and it was made in Canada, because of course it was. Oh, no. mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, yeah, God. So, so, so I, get, I mean, after all these descriptions, I feel like it's superfluous to even ask, like, this question, but, uh, who would you say would like these, and who do you think wouldn't? <laughs> um, I guess if I you don't read like them. child torture. I read them when I was like ten. So, hmm, who would <laughs> like these? I, I mean, I want to say anyone who gives them a chance, because they're they're not they're you know they're written for a younger audience so the writing is in you know always like like don't go into it expecting to read shakespeare but it, they're it's still a very good story and honestly i think k a. applegate the author did like a good job in taking a children's series seriously mm -hmm. um I also am a big fan of hers because I wrote her a letter when I was a little kid and she actually wrote back. Aww. Aww. Her letter with drawings of other aliens I thought they should include in the series. I guess not understanding the series had been done for like a decade. Uh, That's adorable. Um, but I, I, yeah, I really think, I honestly think a lot of people would like it. It's, it's a sci-fi series, which is not usually my cup of tea. Um, 
but it's it's kind of light sci-fi because it is mostly like the sci-fi is like there's aliens and then these people can turn these kids can turn into animals so like uh so yeah i don't i don't know i my perspective skewed because i don't know who i am without these books so uh i don't know who wouldn't like them you wouldn't be jacinthia without these books. i wouldn't be a true jacinthia without the animal series okay i discovered something mm-hmm. looking up the tv show so the main char- so one of the main characters jake is played by sean ashmore in the animorphs uh, show which i didn't realize is fucking iceman from the x-men movies oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i uh, t- this is like when I looked up a random show and I found Jake Gyllenhaal just or just in a random Canadian teen sitcom back in like the early 2000s and it's like what are you doing here? Go home. <laughs> but yeah, uh, well ha. Huh. I could wow, talk I, about, I, I could talk about this series for days without stopping. Like, well, <laughs> well, we don't yeah. have days, but you know, I kind of want. I never actually read the. I saw these books in the library all the time. I never picked them up because the covers. Uh, no, not even the covers. I was just, I, I was just kind of like, huh. Because uh, I, I read like I read like the back of the books and their concept and stuff. But the thing was, at the library, they never had like the first volume. They um... always had like volume seven. And I was like, I'm not going to go into this at the seventh volume. I'll just wait until there was a first volume available. And there never was. So I have a theory: some asshole kid just did not return the first book, I... and that asshole kid was Joe. Was me, yes. I would go to my public library and be like, because there's like 50-something books in this series, um, I they didn't have all of them, obviously. So I would have to go to the librarian and be like, can you request the next one from like the state library? Because they can do that. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, yeah, it'll take like a few days for it to get in. And I'd be like, okay, <laughs> give me a call. As of, you yeah. know, you, as little Joe says, you know, uh, with his overalls and little spinny cap, uh, mm-hmm. it just, you know, give me a dial. Uh, I, I'm you know. I'm nine, so I don't have much going on. Yeah, yeah you know, I I have my I have my race cars and my fire trucks, but you know, I think I could squeeze in a, a call from you people. <laughs> jo- Joe was never a child; he was just a little man. I was born as an 86-year-old man doing my Sudokus and wearing my high-waisted <laughs> pants. Oh, your poor your poor mother had to give birth to a Sudoku book along with you. <laughs> uh, but okay, so uh, Max, you can go next with your okay. media because I'm going to ask the chat. Chat, I have two things oh, I no. can talk about. This was literally what I wanted to do because I have three things that I had to talk about. And I wanted to ask chat. Oh, All right, no. you know what, since I have two, let's ask chat and we'll just look and see and then I'll go. And then they get, okay. because less options. So chat, um, I did the usual thing that I uh, that I do when I have a week full of work, which is watch the same four shows over and over. <laughs> um, and I don't go outside unless it's to go to the gym. And, you know, there's nothing playing on the gym besides South Park reruns. So uh, either... I can talk about Bluey and explain the appeal of this preschool dog show um, as a 26-year-old person. Or I can talk about Unicorn Wars, which I had to watch because I edited a video for Saber, which is a a uh, Spanish-French movie. Uh, It's an animated movie about teddy bears fighting unicorns. So... Uh, which one would you guys rather me talk about? The one with the square dogs or the ones with the teddy bears? <laughs> I'm I was in a I was in a very I need comfort mood this week, I guess. Uh just to check though. I would very if... much recommend so... that Unicorn Wars is only a poster because there is some gnarly footage of the movie. I, I was about to say, are we talking about this movie? Yes, I'm talking about that movie. Okay, just checking. Yes. Uh, 
Maybe I should have been a little bit more uh, descriptive with my uh, synopsis of un of teddy bears fighting unicorns. Uh, I mean, three people have said Bluey so far. Okay, so Bluey. Uh, oh hi, hi, my hi, uh, audience of mostly twenty somethings to thirty somethings. Do you want to watch a Disney Junior show about an Australian dog and uh, and her family? I actually like that idea. Yes, please. Okay, I still so need to watch this show. Yeah. So okay, let me explain. Because saying that you're an adult who watches Bluey makes people give you the side eye, jo <laughs> but uh, and make you think that you are people who punch children in the toy aisle of Target. So. <laughs> <laughs> I even said in this chat, I was like, I don't know what to pick, Unicorn Wars or Bluey, and explain the appeal. So, what is Bluey about? I mean, if you lived under a rock, uh, Bluey is about, well, Bluey, who is a blue healer, and just her average day goings-ons with uh, her family, which is uh, her sister Bingo, her father Bandit, and her mother Chili. And... Yeah, it's just the daily going on and like usually them playing with the dad who is the best character in the show um and and it actually it was a show made for the best way i can describe it it's a kid show that was made more for parents and inadvertently for really sad millennials who need a hug <laughs> Uh, because, like, a lot of the plot lines about the show is less about the kids learning lessons and more about the parents learning how to... learning or displaying uh, proper communication with the kids and treating kids as people. Which, that should not be uh, a thing to reach for. That should just be the fucking standard. Yeah, because, like, yeah, one of the mi biggest comforts of Bluey is that, like, the parents don't really talk down to the kids or even, like, uh, be very, like, authoritative with being like, do this because I say so. Like, they actually explain stuff. It is what gentle parenting is is and not what people think it is. Um, and, you know, also just the fun of, like, seeing these kids play pretend and the parents being, like, really into it and having fun instead of treating it like uh, playing with kids is a chore they actually do have a good time and you know the parents are still people too and all that and they mess with them and tease them and all that stuff it's it's a it's a super functional family in an animated show i can't believe this exists <laughs> um i'm sorry i love the simpsons but there was a precedent set of let's make every animated family dysfunctional we don't need that <laughs> But where um, does the drama come from if they are all functional? I mean, they do have, like, some episodes that basically very much code characters as, like, neurodivergent or having problems or, like, you know, kids not being able to fully understand the emotions that they are feeling. But this is <laughs> even more wholesome stuff. <sighs> I mean, I mean, there's an episode... Where uh, the mom's sister, it is heavily implied that she's infertile, and that's why she hasn't visited them in like four years because she feels bad. <laughs> hmm. In a preschool show, um, but yeah, it's just a wholesome, nice show, and like uh, you know, some people don't want that. Some people want blood, guts, score, and drama, and to be sad and and war crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there is no war crimes in Bluey. I am sorry. Uh, Apology accepted. <laughs> I mean, their war crime off. is that they're Australian, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, like, also, side, this has nothing to do with the show's quality, but this is something I like about Australian media. Uh, they apparently have a broadcasting rule in Australia that if you... If the actors are below, like, the legal age, like, for a voice acting role, they're not credited because they want to respect... It's a privacy law, mm. which I think is great. I think that's actually a really good idea. And, yeah. And, may, and yeah, cool. Because Lord knows, we all need to fuck up children more than we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, 
I mean, everyone in their grandmother who has watched the show uh, has said that Bandit, the dad, is the best character in the show. And he is. He's one of the best, like, dads in in TV and animation. He's fun. He's snarky. He's like... He makes me th- he makes me think of my dad and that makes me happy. He is a dad that either reminds you of your dad or you wish your dad was that. <laughs> and I I really love it. I it, it's a show that just puts a smile on your face. So I guess if you don't like smiling, you won't like Bluey. Um our friend Gerber wants to kick wants to like just like kill Beat the, up. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a character named Muffin who is their cousin who's like a two-year-old, a literal toddler. And you know, she acts like a toddler. You know, like, I want to do what I want. She screams. Uh, if it doesn't get a nap, she acts like a crazy person. And my, our friend Gerber just wants to punt the, the poor dog. <laughs> yes, that's Muffin. And look, I love Muffin. She's a little goblin. I can't be mad at goblins. Uh, I and then you know what she just acts like what a kid acts like oh yeah so I guess if you don't like children don't watch Bluey <laughs> I love her look <laughs> at her <laughs> look at her I <laughs> it's that's literally a screenshot from her yelling I want to do what I want <laughs> because the episode is um she sucks her thumb and they're trying to get her to not suck her thumb so they put a cone of shame around her head you know like what you do with an actual dog Oh, well, that's funny. How would oh, that? That's... I'm curious, based on their sort of physiological setup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was gonna say it either wasn't gonna cover the whole mouth, or it would absolutely restrict their arms. I I love how it looks. Yeah. I love that. Also, the show is very well animated. Like you wouldn't be yeah. able to tell, given the fact that they're all shaped like bread. But like, the show is like gorgeous looking like which makes sense the show's funded by the australian government like it's uh like pbs like it's their version of the like a pbs show it just gets licensed to disney uh and like the music is really nice there's a whole episode that's almost completely silent where it's bingo dreaming and she's in space and i will say this show has gotten me misty-eyed quite a few times again this is a show for parents and sad millennials. Oh yeah, that's the resolution. They pull the cone down so she could actually play. I <laughs> I love it. And I the kid actors are amazing. Like they are especially Muffin. She has I I I can't I want to know like when the girl comes of age if she decides to be like, "Hey guys, I'm the one who played Muffin." I want to shake her hand because she brings so much gremlin energy to this little puffball that i just i love it i love them so much this show is so fucking cute i i I, look i understand some you know this may not appeal to everyone simply because it is you know it is just a seven minute cute little kid show and some people want more substance if i want substance i can go watch another show but if i just need a moment of peace i'll watch bluey it's not hyperactive. It's not crazy. It's just nice. It's just look at the fun bread dogs. Like <laughs> <laughs> I will also, but uh, I did want to end this on this one tangent, though. Uh, there was an article. Our good friend Chi Chi. Uh, she got. To, she knows people who live in Australia. She's gotten the. She's gotten these episodes early from people she knows in Australia because they broadcast there before they come here. She found an article from an Australian news site that was an editorial about the the dad, and it was like, "Is it okay that I am attracted to the dad from Bluey?" Oh, the dog. And I. <laughs> I mean, the I anthropomorphic. Have... The anthropomorphic dog dad. And I will not... I am not mincing words when I say that reading that was just reading someone having a furry awakening in, like, their 40s. (laughs) And it's just, like... Because they were, like, uh, you know, there's something so attractive about this... about this, uh, about this, uh, male figure who's super laid back and cowabunga... 
at, and they're just so appealing and, and you know pointing out like like <laughs> there was like fan art on the on the editorial and i was like this this woman's becoming a furry before my very eyes this is the this is the soccer mom equivalent to people watching zootopia and getting a thing for judy hops or something being like i'm not a furry but you know that rabbit can get it i'm not a furry but that dog i'll call him daddy you know that kind of things of all of all the options of all animated characters of all animated uh, anthropomorphic animals, dad. yeah, they want the blue rectangle that is a dog. <laughs> yes, uh, the, the, he's a pair. It's a very it's that it's a thing that shows that personality wins. I was gonna say it's got to be emotional, right? Oh, like, it's, it's definitely like... personality based. I mean, he is like a hilarious character. Uh -huh. If you watch most Bluey out of context things, they're usually just Bandit and maybe Muffin, <laughs> but like, uh, yeah. I fully recommend everyone to give Bluey a chance. If you, if it doesn't grab you, it doesn't grab you. You know, you don't lose a lot by w not watching Bluey, but you you gain a lot if you do. The, like, the it's just are, nice. The episodes are ridiculously short. Like, oh yeah, they're only like seven, maybe eleven minutes long. Like, they are, they're little bite-sized snippets, yeah. which it's very consumable. But yeah, that that's uh, that's Bluey, guys. Uh, so, so Max, yes. you have three medias. Okay. Pick one. Exactly. So I have ongoing movie franchise, mm -hmm. TV show I talked about before, but now I have concluded it. Mm -hmm. Or first impression video game. I mean, the first impression one could be topical because i know that you played it yesterday that might be one of the three i know exactly what the movie <laughs> franchise one oh, was ah uh, potentially well, yes because you stated it when we were scheduling three it's idiots it's true it's true even so i haven't seen the newest installment yet oh odie has a odie has a, a good qualifier which ah. one did you like the least oh that's a problem they are all on my like list they, yeah, they, but which one all... did you like the least? Okay, so they're all good. So in, in, in the hope that I get most ragey or to kick one out, um, I might say that the... Oh, they're all good in their own way. Ah! Oh, you Odie, you didn't make it you know easier. I, <laughs> it's a good... I, I, I think like we should get an impartial okay. thing okay. who has no investment in this either way. Joe, yeah. which one should Max talk about? The movie franchise, the first impression, or the series that he finished? I can also, if, if it helps you, I can also say what the three are. First impression. The first impression. So, this means we are not going to talk about... Fuck. Where, there are <laughs> Bluey's! <laughs> <laughs> so, we are, we are not going to talk about John Wick 1, 2, 3, which, uh, due to the fourth one being currently out in cinema, I rewatched. Uh, together with Denim, who hasn't seen them before. This means we are not going to talk about Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which uh, we finally finished this week, but it means we are going to talk about Hades, which Damn I it, played I for the first time. Like, pull up. I, I wanted you to pull up Muffin again by Muffin. accident. <laughs> well, because then we'll, we'll, we'll have another member of the Killing Muffin team. Gerbert will get a friend. <laughs> um... But yeah, I, I, I guess I'm talking about Hades and not the other two. I mean, I can p potentially bring John Wick back after I've seen the fourth one uh, and, and say how I the mean, franchise that, that is makes, a whole. That makes the most sense. It too. does. It probably does. I, I, I might have even more to say than, than just the first three. It, it might even be more interesting for everybody who hasn't seen it yet. So hopefully next week. Uh, Hades. Um, also, I guess Brooklyn, just one word. Great show, uh, uh, even handled, even in the face of uh, police not having the best reputation, it f strikes a well balance between uh, um, nah, uh, uh, acknowledging those aspects but still delivering a fun show. But often, but mm -hmm. every now and then, also tackling the, the more serious topics. Anyways, Hades. Plus, it has a dog. It has the best dog. Better. <laughs> Cheddar. 
Cheddar! You're not uh, Cheddar, you're just some basic bitch. <laughs> I, I, I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. What? She the bitch. <laughs> uh, oh, it's Also, also, in comparison, even though we are supposed to talk about Hades, in comparison, for example, to Big Bang Theory, where the characters at the end of the show, or even at the middle, I never watched it to the end, where in the middle of the show, the characters do not resemble the characters from the beginning of the show at all. While in Big mm -hmm. Bang Theory, they just changed the characters. No, they they, they yeah. just rewrote and retconned the characters in the most drastic ways because they were run out, ran out of ideas with the originally envisioned characters. In Brooklyn, the changes uh, are a are lot organic, more or, uh, organic like and sense. believable. And, and, and yes, sometimes they do a, go, go a little bit extreme, but it's a comedy show. But at the core, the characters remain consistent and develop. Anyways, Hades! <laughs> also great. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, well. uh, uh, yeah. First impression: it. Uh, I managed to actually go in more or less blind. Uh, I mean, you cannot make it to 2023 without knowing anything about the game. So I knew that it was uh, roguelite, that it was uh, the general story that you are the son of Hades who is trying to escape the Tartarus, um, and that uh, well, it's from Super Giant Games, and I have uh, played um, Bastion. Which was her first breakthrough hit. I still. I, I didn't know it was a roguelike game. I just saw the character designs and they were like, oh, oh nice. Also, yeah, the, 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 the character designs. And not just the designs. Um, no, to, to stick with the comparison of Bastion, because I have still to play Transistor, which is in my library so much longer than Hades, and yet Hades cut in line. Um, no, uh, uh, you can see that Supergiant Games by now has made. Uh, 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 it became a household name and has some budget behind their games while in Bastion they just had the one voice actor who did everything with this marvelous deep uh, uh, engaging voice this one is like fully 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 voice cast so well, no this is not fully voice fully has a full has a full voice cast exactly and they are glorious they are glorious. Some of the characters, like Dionysus, is uh, it's it's. In case this is uh, requires still a little bit more explanation, Hades is the Greek god of the underworld, reigning in Tartarus, which is the D, uh, which is the Greek mythology realm of the dead slash hell. But then again, only certain parts of Tartarus are really hell. I mean, are all the damned souls there? Anyways. So Greek mythology. So they are, uh, and by being the son of one of the uh, big, oh, uh, big Kahunis, the god of death, Hades, uh, you you also get to to meet and converse with um, all those uh, other bi uh, big honchos in the Greek mythology. And yeah, Dionysus, god of partying and wine and everything, he he is a glorious dude. Um, who else is glorious? Then you, uh, very. The characters are just great characters. Okay, I should. Um, so fantastic writing. Very There's eloquent. Also, yeah, I know, right? Uh, I definitely am not a writer for that game because uh, I am not as good as they are. Um, uh, so, uh, but to, to come back, yeah. You have, as you can see, going down on screen, uh, you have a very smooth, colorful, even, um, while still remaining the darkish tone of the underworld, um, uh, a world. Uh, controls are also very smooth, even, even a, 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 a wannabe gamer like me is able to manage to get somewhere. Um, even not at, uh, at the highest speed. And um, the writing, but that's the thing, you have the great gameplay, you have an engaging gameplay loop that doesn't get boring, but you have also so much writing where the aspect of the uh, fully voice-overed game comes in again, uh, that I have played this game for, what was it, uh, three and a half hours yesterday, and even so it's a roguelite game, so you keep dying. That's the entire idea of it, which is also in this game incorporated in the gameplay itself. You canonically keep dying and respawning, and this is 
an in-universe explana uh, uh, has an in-universe explanation, which most roguelines don't. For most of them, it's just like, oh, you die, you take some stuff over, and then you redo it as if the first run never happened, even so you carried some experience and whatnot with you. And uh, here it is uh, part of the writing, part of the story, that uh, which, which uh, makes it very engaging. Then you have fun elements like a diegetic narrator. So you have a narrator who constantly does all those like, oh, he did this and that. And, and not only does your character reply to the narrator and it's like, dude, I can hear you. <laughs> oh, so it's like the Beyonder. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but with the difference that when the Beyonder does uh, uh, narration, it usually doesn't get heard unless he is directly talking to somebody. Here, oh, yeah. the, character them, uh, the character himself hears the narrator and is replying. So uh, ah. uh, I assume that, I mean, now we are talking mythology, so I assume it is also some kind of god or servant of the gods or whatever who does maybe do the, the uh, history, historiography for the gods and therefore is omnipresent uh, and can moderate whatever is happening. Mm. Um uh, that is uh, my guess that I will eventually potentially run into him and I'm, I'm, I'm eagerly waiting for that moment but there's also a very brilliant moment I'm not going to give any, any uh, more details away because it was like for me a very brilliant moment but a brilliant moment where the narrator gave something away that the character didn't know and the character was like wait what? and the narrator like oh. <laughs> so <laughs> Right. just as an example of how imaginative and great the writing is then yeah gameplay you need to like this kind of gameplay uh no this top view smashy smashy uh gameplay it's, it's a very simple one that's nice uh you don't have to learn gigantic skill trees you you get uh, you improve your abilities in every run but it's kept basic enough that you don't need to uh, have an encyclopedia uh, encyclopedic knowledge of of uh, the potential skills or whatnot um so i would say very accessible uh, nice controller game uh optimized for controller i assume i, I haven't even tried mouse and keyboard I, I have to admit it was kind of helpful that uh, halfway through the stream uh, somebody came into the chat and gave uh, uh, advice but with my request spoiler free, but was like, no, when I basically went in front of the two doors and I'm like, oh, what, what door should I take? And uh, he was like, eh, really? Trust me, take this one. I'm like, okay. And eventually, uh, uh, no, screw you. Exactly. I uh, can't read. <laughs> then again, the thing is, uh, they replied delay hey the, joe the, you're in the game look yeah it does kind of it does kind of look like your character just like me. H hypnos, yeah. is, hypnos is an absolutely fantastic character i love hypnos uh but no the the, the fellow in the chat due to the chat no, stream delay chat having to type it I usually missed all the tips he gave me in the beginning and eventually... Uh, uh, this is why you turn on low latency when you set up your stream. I, I, I believe it is on low latency. <laughs> Ultra low latency? Maybe not that. I have to, to figure that out. Either way, uh, they just ended up joining me and Odie in call. So... Uh, and uh, so I, I had my little... Uh, my, my, my little uh, helper... Uh, your little Navi. Exactly. I had my little Navi there. Hey, listen. So, um, uh, which which I have to say, yeah, I was thankful, uh, especially on stream, to not have me fumble around too much. Uh, but I dare to say the game is still uh, accessible enough that even if you don't have a little uh, helper uh, whispering advice into your ear, uh, it's easy enough to figure it all out over time yourself i mean it's meant to be uh, uh to do multiple runs also most important thing you can pet the dog that is oh. the most important thing <laughs> so, 10 out of, at do him. i need to say oh. more <laughs> look boy at, time well, okay i don't even i don't even okay, need to okay, ask okay. who you think you would like the game and who wouldn't look at them <laughs> oh, little guy. oh look at them i love them. Him lips. 
Oh. You, you you need even more incentive to 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 like Cerberus. Only get to the part where you can pet Cerberus and then don't continue the game. <laughs> Good thing Cerberus isn't like a husky. Because have you oh, heard husky screams? Scream? Yeah, and yes. then he'd have three heads. <laughs> have you seen the oh, video they... of the husky in the bathtub yeah. just screaming because it doesn't yeah. want to get out? Right. That, but with three heads? But they can then do it in a da. Oh, oh no, oh. they would not harmonize. What are the you talking about? The problem is huskies are usually more like... But but yeah, if Ta you were... Huskies sound like humans that just lost their ability to make word. But if you want to have even more incentive to love Cerberus, so after your first attempt to run off, Cerberus got so sad that it uh, destroyed an entire launch. Oh. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but okay, so you talked a lot about it. So who I, do you I think did. would like the game? Who do you think wouldn't? Um... I would say it mostly boils down to if you like this kind of gameplay né, uh, uh, or gameplay loop, uh, like no, you need to in the first place be in favor of roguelite. Uh, you need to um, like this kind of game where you run hack and, hack, hack and slash is the name for it, right? For the genre. Yes, hack and yes. slash. You need to yes. like hack and slash or at least be open minded to it. Once again, if this is uh, if Hades turns into uh, babies first hack and slash i guess it's a good entry in the series uh, in into the genre so if you like the uh, this kind of gameplay or want to give it a try this is good for you if not then this is probably the only big uh, uh uh deal breaker that i can come up with for hades because it has solid writing un unless you hate story if you really really hate a story full of fun interesting characters then maybe go for a more basic one like diablo where you can just hack and slash your way all the way through the monsters and can ignore all the quest givers and the background story and what's going on in the world so i would say yeah if, if, if you can also check out my let's play of it in the link down below um if you want to get a first impression if you want to see how it plays as a first impression no instead you guys should all uh if you want to see some see some first impressions uh go and follow king underscore underscore moosh on twitter mm -hmm. <laughs> instead uh, you should play he'll never play the game no he just oh. I, I'm trying to divert things away from you. I see. Hey, I you don't know. I might I might play the game. I love Greek mythology. See? Oh. Yeah. You know what? There you go. Excellent. I mean, I guess I won't if that's the bit you're trying to go for. No, I guess now I, I can't. Know, no, no, don't don't I'm, no, don't listen to my bits. Come on. You haven't listened to them before. Hey, I, I'm nothing if not willing to go along for a bit. Look, I know that you are a living embodiment of an improv class, but like... <laughs> Ironically, I've never taken one. Yeah, I thought you took one with Derek. I auditioned for an improv uh, troupe, and uh... we did callbacks together, but he got in and I did not. Aww. There's a lizard in my pocket. I deserve to get in, and some of those people did not, but you know, yeah, there's a lizard in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that is alluding to a scene that Derek was in when we went to college together in the improv troupe that was so bad because it's someone just so ruined funny. it. so <laughs> funny. Oh, I love it. Yeah, also, I do want to say tough. about Hades, I looked down at the, the awards on the Wikipedia page, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, it won Game of the Year at the British Academy Game Awards. Okay, the 24th Annual Dice Awards and the gaming awards which i was like oh the gaming awards cool no it's spelled g-a-y-m-i-n-g -G. and oh. i just want to say that is the best name for an award because it's gay yeah gaming oh Cause yeah because it's gay the, 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 once again one of the things where you know uh, here a little bit it's apparently a very uh, lgbt uh, uh uh inclusive game Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with all the storylines I don't know any details once again I'm more mostly blind about this game but I have heard this kind of meta stuff about it that it's like yeah, yeah. I'm just saying no I'm just saying that because I guess the, it's from a UK magazine called Gaming Magazine mm. I, that is a great name I'm mad that I didn't come up with it so good job uh, Gaming Magazine y you win names but yeah, so there you go. There's the media segment. Indeed. And yeah, with that, uh, uh, 
let us all have a short moment of acknowledgement for this Art of the Week framed by the new 2023 uh, design, which you might say like, come on guys, isn't it like three months in? But it's only the fifth episode, so... Yeah, so, I would you still know, say like I, the majority of the year. Shut up, we can take our time. Are exactly. you paying for the show? No one is. <laughs> so, and, but, yeah. and you know what? I'm glad that we got this this new layout in when we got uh, Joe because the colors work really well with Joe's palette. It's true. I I think it. Oh, it's not on my Twitter anymore. Is it on my Discord? I did. Yeah, it's my Discord uh, icon. Is the background. Uh, is a bi flag and the colors are the bi colors in the background here so it yeah, actually no. fits really it, it well all, it all works out it all works we, out we, we, we all planned it this way ha ha mm -hmm. ha 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 totally. it was designed with me in mind yes it did joe will be our guest from now on there will be and and we'll call we'll call him other things and he'll just have little funny mustaches on to be another person yeah no more guests it's just me but I pretend to be someone else. Exactly. Uh, so next week we're going to have Robert Downey Jr. on the show. Yeah, it's featuring Kim Mush as Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yes, it's like a play. In in place of Robert Downey, the role of Robert Downey Jr. will be played by King underscore underscore Moosh. But also... You know him as Jacinthia. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, buddy, uh, yeah, also so, to do yes, the art Fluttershy. itself, the art as well. Yes, this is yes. from FTK or Fluttershy the Kind. They are a fantastic artist. Um, they worked on Animaniacs and a bunch of things. That uh, she's great. Love them. Uh, That's and, good uh, art. Yes, I, I want the audience to guess who got this artwork. Like who who paid for it? Do you do do you know us well enough to know who would get it? Because <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's not it's not one of the two hosts. It's the other one. <laughs> oh, it's not one of the two hosts. It's yes, the, this, one, yeah, yeah. this is the this it's is the one, one or the, the other. Coins. It's in a quarter. <laughs> yes. The it's, other one was. One... It was <laughs> it was King Moosh all along. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, it was, it was just like to celebrate meeting in person for my birthday. Exactly. Then, you know, Which we did. Just... I know the face that hides behind this crown i mean you know the face i had to stare that face down when it was trying to figure out your middle name and going fucking that cross was fun. that was fun and you uh, actually figured out my middle name which was very like I have that was the moment he was going cross-eyed and yeah. crazy but uh but yeah i got this for max look at look at this handsome little ferret boy Right, wrong direction. And June's art <laughs> style works great with the, his with a ferret. I love it. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah. So do we? Ha I'm guessing we have at least one on. We Twitter. do have at least one, and I believe there are some hidden ones for, I assume, King Moosh followers who didn't figure out how hashtags work. Uh -huh. Um. So I have a few, I actually believe it or not. I hope not. one's not a, uh, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to become Joe's friend really quickly, to ask him if he believes in ghosts. Oh my god. But okay, let's <laughs> let's start with an easy one. Okay, okay. Uh, from uh, Peanut, aka sm Smallest Peanut. Oh, Peanut! Okay, yeah. we know Peanut. How do you like your eggs cooked if you like them at all? Oh, good question. Yeah, but good it's an easy question. one. It's an easy one, isn't it? Yeah, so, so uh, Joe, how do you like your eggs? Uh, I prefer them sunny side up. Mm -hmm. If I, I am, like, getting, like, you know, if I'm going to, like, a diner and I'm getting, like, pancakes and eggs and bacon and stuff, I'll usually get it sunny side up. But uh, my fiancé is a big fan of hard-boiled eggs, so we have those uh, pretty frequently. But I'll, I, I really like eggs cooked in a lot of different ways, but... To answer the question, I guess sunny side up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about you, Max? Uh, I guess uh, for me it's also a little bit circumstantial. Like in a diner, I would actually also go sunny side up unless I, I just have a no glibber day, then I go uh, scrambled. But if uh, uh, on the more regular, which I guess at the end of the day boils down to what I prefer as my go-to version of egg, is uh, also uh, actually hard boiled, like freshly hard boiled, not the ones that you can buy in the supermarket and that sit in your fridge. They're like, yeah. 
Freshly mm-hmm. hard boiled, still warm. Um, Y'all are gross. That, gross. That, or alternatively, alternatively, also potentially freshly hard boiled, then uh, dunked into, I believe, soy sauce or whatever overnight, so they can turn into what, like a uh, pickled or, egg, or or onsen eggs or whatever, some nice eggs to uh, add to your ramen. For the mm. extra bit of protein, yes. No, no, no. Yeah, very much, yes. Do you not like oh. eggs? Usually, I mean, no. I mean, I'm not oh. a. I, 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 I look, view look eggs at, not. Look not. at it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I Good. never eat the. I never eat the egg in a ramen. Oh, you are missing out mm. there. Mm. But no, I eat eggs in a ramen if it's a fried egg. But yeah, I don't like. I don't like the tech to explain, so it doesn't sound like I'm just an egg hater. I, I don't like the say. texture. Uh, I don't like the texture of a hard-boiled egg, specifically the egg whites. I think it's rubbery, and I have a thing with with rubbery things in my mouth. Unless it's gum, I don't want it. So well, then tell us how do you pr- uh, how is your what is the question favorite way or uh, how do you uh, like how I your like eggs? eggs? Okay, look, nine times out of ten, I think eggs are just a utility. I think I I I. You know, I need protein, I get muscle, I scramble up some eggs with some cottage cheese in them because it makes it fluffy and you get extra protein. And I fucking just down it down. Let's do not give that. Down it down like a like a, like a guy in an anime eating a bowl of rice. But if I feel uh, spicy and I'm like, uh, I want, you know, actual effort in my eggs, uh, I have two ways that I like them. One is uh, called uh, eggs in a basket, mm. which I've is had that. which I found out from watching Frasier, uh, which is the, basically you put a hole in a piece of toast and you crack the egg in it and let the egg like basically do a sunny side up fried egg inside mm-hmm. the hole. I like that. Or the other way that I like it is uh, Chuck. I can never pronounce it right. It's um, shakshuka, shashuka, which is uh, eggs that are, I think some people call them eggs in hell because Mm. it is, you, it's basically like a tomato bell pepper sauce and then you uh, crack the eggs in them and let them cook in that sauce. It looks delicious. Oh, it is, it is so good. I, I prefer eggs made in a very, like, uh, there's a lot of Middle Eastern egg recipes that I really mm. like. Uh, because I pr- think that the Middle East and India have, like, Mediterranean, Middle East, and India, best food on the planet. I, I think Indian food and Italian food are the two best foods on the planet. Fight me, people who like Japanese food. Indian curry is better, and you guys are just wrong. What about Indian ramen? Is Indian ramen a thing? Uh huh. What about Indian sushi? I mm. rest my case. I think that, like, it, it, I think, like, Indian food is just in general more approachable and better. Uh, I also think it's more filling. And that's usual. Again, to me, 90% of the time, food is a utility. You know what is a, what fills me up fast? A good curry. And if you put, if I'm just saying, if you put a plate of sushi and a chicken tikka masala in front of me and told me to eat one, I will eat the tikka masala I, I, first. I, I guess this already answers uh, another would you rather from J-Rock for a future week. <laughs> you get a bowl of sushi <laughs> and a bowl of tikka, chicken tikka masala put in front of you. We already that know would your only answer. Repli- that would only apply to me. No, like, it w- it- uh, I would sit there and be like, oh no, oh no, which one? Because I love them it both. It depends on the sushi. I'm, I'm a... Yeah. I'm, I'm what they may refer to as a basic bitch when it comes to sushi. Are you a spicy tuna roll type of person? No, I almost exclusively have California rolls. Hmm. because I can't uh, eat those because they have crab in it. Well, just try and, I don't know, make your body better at handling crab. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> your food be allergies? Crab. Your, your food I'm, allergies I'm just... that could kill you? Make your body better. Yeah, make your body better at it. I don't know. I'm allergic to cats, and I have two cats, so <laughs> sounds like you just need to try a little bit harder. 
I do, they don't put you in anaphylactic shock. Do you want no, to pay for my EpiPen? No, true, but my eyes get itchy, so checkmate. Oh. Where, where your eyes get itchy? Where? <laughs> yes. Max went into my aunt's house uh, when we were in New York, and he, she had two cats, and one of them was really friendly. And all like, and Max was just like, "Oh, I want to pet him, but I can't." My cats can't. are great. One of them looks very. Your, one sad. of your cats. One of your cats is depressed. One of my cats looks extremely sad all the time, and the other one just kind of looks confused. A lot of the time, <laughs> the two best kinds. So yeah, they're they're silly. Now that we have successfully answered the question about eggs, you know uh -huh. where this entire thing started. What's yeah, the sorry. next one? Uh, so we don't have a lot on the Discord. So we do have one from Enigma, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and given it and oh, okay, there was more. There's more questions. Oh. Hooray! Uh, so uh, Enigma, you're getting skipped for now. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Moosh is a Jojo asks, uh, what is your most obvious sign of stress? Why is this a question? Are, is this to be able to read us better? Wait, like this person's name is Moosh is a Jojo. <laughs> no, this, this is our friend Odie and he likes oh. to change his name very often in discord to reflect what's going on in the, in the podcast. That's fair. Because okay. he likes, he likes me saying dumb stuff. And, and I'm make, it concerned too. me that someone's name was already Mooshes of Jojo before our whole bit no, about my name. No, no, no. no. Yeah. And I believe the, just... first, the first compilation of you reading out all these names is uh, out by now. Yes. Uh, but anyways, so I guess, like, let's reveal something about ourselves. What's a first sign of stress? Um, how do I make this funny? Uh, I don't get stressed very easily. I mean, yeah, Joe doesn't really get stressed. Joe gets violent. I I rarely, yeah. Well, I rarely get stressed. I don't, I just naturally, I don't really, I think it's, I, I don't know. I, I attribute it usually to growing up as the youngest of five in a household mostly full of extroverts. So it was just kind of loud and chaotic all the time. Joe so can things be in are a chaotic. burning elevator with a bunch of people and everyone's freaking out. And he's and just he's, like, this is what, fine. What, what? Come on, guys, he... guys, chill out. You guys are at a ten. I need you at a three. Like, yeah. more it's like, more it's like, you guys are at a ten, and I'm just like, yeah, this is, seems to be about. This is this feels what like I my expect. childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Being around all my cousins and everyone who's insane in my family. Um, yeah. So jo Joe just doesn't get stressed. So, so Joe is is a god. Pretty hard um, to make see. me stressed. Yeah. You can't see. see it because he has his human avatar, but he's actually a yellowish dog with a little bowler hat on his top uh, head. <laughs> Just yeah, he's a dog. He can't this comprehend. Is, this stress. is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, but okay, look. Um, I know it's hard to believe. I get stressed a lot. I I, I know. I'm so cool as a cucumber most of the time. Um. Honestly, like, besides the fact that uh, if I get stressed, I just break out in hives, which isn't fun. Uh, the more fun answer is if I start to get into a stressful situation, I either go into, like, survival mode where I just am, like, very hyper-focused on an end goal. So I'm like, okay, whatever, let's just try to get to, let's try to get out of this. Or I deflect all stressful things with humor. So if I'm starting to talk like I'm doing the tight five of someone's stand-up routine, mm -hmm. that usually means I'm stressed. <laughs> humor is a humor is a coping mechanism to some people. Hi, I'm some people. <gasps> what about you, Max? What about me, indeed? Um, I'm not too easily stressed either. Uh, however, I have a dog too. Hmm? is this your human? Are you a dog too? Is this your human VTuber? Mm, maybe. This entire time? Maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of situations where I do go get stressed and on the regular, it's like traveling. Not that I'm stressed about being on an airplane or anything. It's just like being there, making it in time. Like uh, the, uh, uh, most uh, 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 specifically the first stretch of it, like 
ne, getting from home to the train station or the airport because ne, after that it's out of my hand if the connections okay. that I booked cannot be reached I can't do anything about it and I get a lot more chill about it but for that time it's like <sighs> checking the time so being very like just tense like 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 or uh, on uh, I don't know no not not very chill not very laid back but like I'm not sure how to best describe it but I mean I know the connection thing you say like I don't know I think it's stressful when you have like an hour connection to something yeah and then like the pl like the physical action is stressful of like move 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 uh mm. or I mean that's also the thing. Usually, uh, I don't get stressed. I get annoyed. My stress in... Most of the time, my stress just gets replaced with annoyance. Because usually, the things that stress me out are humans. I can get annoyed at humans. But there you go. Uh, do, what what else on Twitter? More. Yeah. Uh, we have, of course, obligatory uh, J-Rock. With... Okay. Uh, which is a curious one. Okay. Because it might mm. turn into an educational moment. Oh, ew. Would you rather go without shampoo for the rest of your life or toothpaste? Shampoo. Oh, uh, the shampoo. Shampoo. You could rather uh, uh, give up on uh, shampoo for the rest of the life. Okay. Because <laughs> here is where the potentially educational part comes in. How much does toothpaste actually do? Wasn't this basically invented and marketed relatively recently, like a hundred years ago? And is, it is actually, it's, it's probably doing a little bit, but it's actually not as essential for uh, cleaning your teeth as the advertisement has made us all believe. Look, I'm way too paranoid about the things that happen if you don't take care of your teeth, because this connects to this. There are people who, if your gums get infected, it can go up to your brain. Mm -hmm. I will take any preventative measure. If my hair is greasy, but that's not that's not going to give me a tumor. Like I was gonna say, I can shave my hair and I, no longer I also have an issue. Am like, I'm also the type of person, like my hair is just naturally like healthy and thick. I can wash it with, also shampoo's just soap. You can just <laughs> wash your hair with the soap you use on your body. <laughs> I was gonna say like, it, it's yeah, it's it's like it's it's shampoo that it's soap that is specifically made for hair. So yeah, you could just use soap and get away with it. Whereas if toothpaste is in its modern form, I'll agree. It's the idea of like yeah, it's it's commercialization, whatever you know. The, you have to buy these ones, but like that's just probably because in before they had shampoo they'd be like yeah let's use like bark that we have found makes our teeth better and it's or like use oh, okay, baking so... soda like they yeah. like like here's the yeah, dumb thing about this question one. is that both sides i could just replace it with the previous thing so like shampoo i could just replace it with soap and before people are like no soap doesn't work have you seen guy shampoos there are so many body wash uh body wash and shampoo combos on, yeah. with men's shampoo things we are marketed as women as having very specific ones the only people that have an excuse of like why shampoo would be like the thing that you need is if you have specifically like really coiled hair like you know like black black people hair like that's a specific hair texture that needs specific hair products Mm -hmm. But if you're a white person, nine times out of ten, you could just use soap. But yeah, so like, either way, I'm fine. But there is more likelihood of a bad health event happening if I don't use toothpaste. Also, I just don't Assuming want my teeth to real. fall out. Assuming this is real, that would be my big my my my, my big hang up. Like, is this real or not? Because I don't uh, like it. Uh, th this is just a complete thing of, uh, 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 now what, what do you call it? Uh, not pride, not, not uh, narcissism, there's a term for it. Uh, when you care about your appearance or are sensitive about it. Oh, yeah, like your ego. 
No, not that you. Nar- Nar- narcissism, vanity. Vanity was, I believe, vanity the one is I was probably looking the specific for. One, yes, yeah. yes. So no, it, it, it's a matter of vanity where I'm like, yeah, if my hair gets too oily or whatever, it, it's like super flat and it's already thin hair. So, so I, I, I just don't look at like to look at myself when the hair gets this way. Uh, however, so under the condition that toothpaste is actually not needed and we all just have been brainwashed by uh, into it by we the have not, we have not been brainwashed by it you sure like i here's the i'm thing. not talking about brushing your teeth but no specifically but here's the, the here's the specific thing about like modern toothpastes is that the contents of most modern and i'm not talking expensive toothpaste i'm just talking like a normal fucking thing of two dollar colgate modern toothpastes have stuff that protects your enamel and plaque which we gain more easily in the modern era simply because the food we eat is different than what we had mm-hmm. in the past mm-hmm. in that it is more processed and more acidic and more sugary because even if you don't have sugar like there are just we have a diet that is simply m- more like have more things that fucking ruin our enamel and toothpaste helps with that especially specific toothpaste like sensodyne stuff would help build back your enamel or at least put it in place of enamel we just simply live in a dietary era where we need the stuff that is in normal toothpaste nowadays well, ironic ironically enough on this conversation i have heard tons of times people talk about they're like oh yeah you don't actually need shampoo it, you only need shampoo because you use shampoo. Um, I now I want to say I don't agree with this, but some people claim that if you go long enough without shampoo, your hair stops becoming greasy, and it just kind of, it you know it might be dirty, but it's just like oh, the oils build back up in your hair. It's like I, I don't can actually I can actually attest hair every to day. this. Two, no, four dead ass. Like I this. can attest to this. Mm-hmm. I only shampoo my hair like twice a week, if that, because I had to start not shampooing my hair often because shampoo is abrasive, which takes away hair dye. If it has like sulfate in it too, it's just bad for your hair, yeah. Because I had to shampoo it less. And I have very thick hair and I, I also have natural hair that have natural oils in it because it's Mediterranean hair, but it was very, very greasy as a kid, but I also shampooed every single day. When I stopped shampooing as often, my hair, became drier, not in the, you know, crusty, flaky way, but just in the, oh, it's not nearly as oily and heavy as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Shampoo is, I, I, I personally think shampoo is probably less important in a day-to-day, especially since we're kind of comparing one thing that is almost exclusively vanity, shampoo, versus... A literal like bone in our body. If yeah, if your teeth start, if your teeth get infected, you could die. Like if your hair gets bad, it's gonna not be great for you. But like you can get like a hair gel it. or something, man. Like yeah. there, there are things that can fix things that aren't shampoo related. I, I. Yeah, you ah. get a tooth, you get a toothache, and you're like, oh, this doesn't feel great. The next week, you die because an infection got to your brain. Like, yeah, toothpaste is like medicine. Yeah, whereas shampoo Odie puts it is best. Like toothpaste is healthcare. Shampoo is self care. Like, yes. that's like, great. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, 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 me and Joe are going to high five in our shampoo less society. Our hair is going to smell terrible. And, and but I, we... I'm happy too because uh, I, I predicted that this would be an educational one and I was proven right. Yeah. That's Anyways, true. next question. <laughs> I don't like it when you're right. <laughs> I like you, but I don't like you when you're right. Uh, okay, so from Denim, what's a hobby or skill you're curious about but haven't gotten around to learning? Oh, so not at all. So skills that we so, are not. So you look honed? at it and you're like, yeah. oh, that's neat, so, but so, you haven't committed. So, so me withdrawing or me with guitar doesn't count because I actually got into it. But we are talking about something that is completely like unt- as of yet untouched. Okay. Yes. Mm. Like you haven't you haven't even poked it, but mm-hmm, you look mm-hmm. at it and you're like, oh that that would be that would be neat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, that's a good one. Huh. 
Hmm. A elec electricity. <laughs> Just electricity. Like in general. being like an electrician. <laughs> like wiring things, learning how to like deal with like electrical mm, cables. Yeah. Like I really like really anything that I I really like like crafts that you can you know you make with your hands and stuff so really any of those are fascinating to me but like in college i got a theater degree and part of that was you have to do like some carpentry work because uh set building and set design so like i got a lot of exposure to that side of like also my uncle's a uh uh like a um a carpenter uh slash like handyman stuff so i've helped him on like things so i got i have had slight exposure to the electrical side of things but I think it would also just be cool because, like, I'm always going to live in a place that has electricity. It'd be cool to not have to have someone do that for me if I need to fix things. And also, electricity, if you get it wrong, you die. Like, <laughs> I can fix a door in my house because the worst that happens is it falls on me. If I get electricity wrong, my body disappears. <laughs> like, I, I get fried. <laughs> True that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I mean, one that I know that I would like to, that I, I have, like, thought about doing, but I haven't, like, t actually done. Wood burning. Mm. I know, a terrifying concept, Chrissy, with something that can burn things. I remember the phase where you would constantly lit uh, matches on the uh, on camera. Oh, what? You mean oh, that, my little oh, that, matchbox? That, that, that faith is still ongoing. I mean, I keep a box of matches at my table at all times. Ah. I do it when I'm... Oh, there's a sign of stress. <laughs> just... <laughs> um, a but sign no, of stress like... for you is and, you just light matches? And, uh, I... Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's a tick thing. I mean, a lot of people mm. will actually see. I tend to... When I'm stressed or when I'm, like, thinking, I tend to just, like do things with my hands i need the italian way i must talk with my hands oh but like uh point being i've seen like our friend my friend dusty does wood burning for like custom guitars and stuff and i always thought like it's it's very cool and also there's like a permanence to it where you just have to commit if you fuck up because mm -hmm. you can't erase or paint over a wood burn and i always find that like that kind of adaptive nature fascinating but for the sheer fact of i don't really have a place in my house where i'm comfortable burning things um you know besides my my desk bathtub i'm not going to do wood burning in a bathtub unless i stream it because that sounds like a genius concept uh at least for views but uh yeah wood burning would be mine yeah, I'm. I'm still thinking because uh, actually, you know, if we are talking about something that completely blank, where I'm just looked from afar and was like, "Oh yeah, that would be cool." I have. I uh, no, if I. If you have been around for a while, like uh, ancient old man A and Y, I have tried a lot of shit throughout my years. So there's a lot of stuff where I have. I, I never adapted it as a proper hobby, and I never no committed to it. But I have tried animation? out a lot of. I have tried that before. Did, have you made like an actual animatic? No, I know no, you. No, no, animatic, animatic, no, not. But at the end of the day, uh, animating something and drawing are two things that I have done. Uh, on, on animatic is like basically combining uh, those like a things. moving, like a moving storyboard. Uh, I, I have but... done flash animation before. Ah. Because uh, I was thinking, like, because uh, uh, I know you've talked about wanting to take moments from Awkward or Git and, like, yeah, I know, do, and like, I still little want to do animatics. This. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, but you haven't done it yet. No, I haven't done this like... specific uh, uh, iteration of it. So, yeah, that that could be an example doing uh, hand-drawn animatics. So, yeah, I guess I take this as an answer because, uh, yeah, there's not too much stuff that I have never tried that I would be like, hey, that would be a cool hobby. So... Yeah, I take this answer. Yeah. Thanks. I, there I, I you take go. Uh, so, oh wait, this yeah, was a what, question from your end. So back to me. Yeah, I guess. So do we have any um, yes. Twitter? So from the uh, hater of uh, uh, hashtags, uh, Lertif. Ler oh, Lertif. Yeah. Lertif. Lertif asked a, a ton of questions. So uh, I guess uh, 
Let, let's see what do we have there. Um, there's there's a long rapid fire. Yeah, basically. Okay, let's let's hear. How did all of you come up with your nicknames? Oh yeah, that is actually. I believe we have a key, and I pr uh, at least I have answered it before, but we can probably do rapid fire. So yeah, how did you come uh, up with our nicknames? Well, how did you come up with King Moosh? King Moosh is my Minecraft username. And I made it years ago when um, mushrooms were introduced into the game because they are my favorite uh, mob in that game. I think they're the most useful. And then King was just because I was like, I don't know, that could be a fun persona to do. Uh, I had because I had been wearing a Minecraft skin in on my old account that was the one that I still wear, which is a mushroom with a crown and a cape. So I just I was like, that could be a fun persona to to have, and it's followed me for. I guess a decade yeah. now. Uh, uh, keyframe as it well, co cosmic keyframe like my current like full sole proprietor name. Uh, keyframe comes from the pony era, but before that, keyframe is because uh, I am an animator. I love animation, and keyframes are the main point of action in an animation. And I am nothing if not a main point of action, <laughs> and. Cosmic because I, I love space. I I uh, everything that I like usually has a space theme. I love astrology, like astronomy. Uh, I think astrology is fascinating and for quacks. Um, but I love astronomy. I love like my favorite anime back when I was a kid was Sailor Moon. I I just know so much about space. I wanted to be an astronomer uh, growing up before art grabbed me with its siren song. And yeah, so put the two together. Make an alien looking uh, avatar later, and that's who I am. Um, yeah, and I guess for mine, uh, it started with trying to be cheeky and not very, and at the same time not being truly comprehensive of the English language. Uh, I wanted to uh, have like a shadowy corporation that controls everything from the behind the scenes, uh, which I wanted to give this name like Any Corp. But if I wanted to be cheeky about it, so I spelled it like this. So A and Y Corp, which uh, then when I started my new channel, I carried over uh, as A and Y Pony. And eventually when I moved away from uh, that particular niche, uh, I try and everybody mis uh, being confused by how to spell it properly or what how to pronounce the spelling, trying to turn it into a phonetic name, which is today's A and Y. So that, that's and then we discover there is someone named with yeah. that spelling. Yeah, that's, and then that's, it's that's exactly. It's it's also the I guess Russian spelling for the uh, female first name Anne. So Anne Rand, Anne Rand. The the. But who listens to the Russians? I exactly. don't. Exactly the infamous author. So, well, that's how that that developed. Well, there you go. Uh, what's the next question? Favorite species of frog. Don't know enough about them to have one. Uh, the little ones that scream. Uh, wood, wood, wood frogs, because they, um, only spawn in, uh, pools of water that come about, uh, I forget what their names are, but it's little ponds that only come about when it rains. Like, they don't have any input of water. They only get water from rainfall, and so they're very temporary ponds, and this species of frog only has a uh, spawn in those particular is this a minecraft thing no no this is a real thing <laughs> when you say spawn to be fair it's called frog spawn what am i supposed to call it okay i didn't that's what fish I... eggs are called it's called spawn you know keyframe before video games <laughs> there was the real life and Don't spawning talk down to me like spawning this, was a term that got adapted from reality for video games i don't have to take this i could leave <laughs> but i'm not so what's the next question um uh, and did any of you ever have a scene phase? I, I don't know what's a scene phase. Oh, see, uh -oh. I did talk to you about scene phases. They're they're like, like the uh, punk, colorful like hair alt things. Uh, yeah. Gur, gur hot topic era. Also, stuff. just any scene or. It, well, well, the subculture of scene. It's a, oh, yeah, it's like okay. it's like a subculture of like punk that is much more brightly colored yeah, and focused. Not. 
Yeah. I actually remember I, I, I talked about this with you because the furry con I went to in January had a scene theme and you looked up see, like a scene music playlist video and then oh, you yeah. linked it to me being like, man, I, I think I actually like this music. <laughs> but um, my favorite thing about the, I didn't go through a scene phase. I mean, I liked pop punk, but I didn't go through like the phase oh, yeah, of it, yeah, especially, yeah. especially like familiar. emo culture and stuff. Because Lord knows my family would have killed me if I dressed like this. Mm, that was kind of, that was probably the thing that held me back as well. Okay. What... I definitely went through a ska phase. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I also never went through Little a scene. Big fish head. Yeah. Yeah, I never went through a scene phase because it wasn't a thing. <laughs> Again, yeah, yeah. old man over here. Oh, shut up. Shut uh, well, this also might be more but, of a, a US centric question. I could see that very, being. I mean, like most of it's US centric. Yeah. I do want to read just a little bit of the scene Wikipedia page because oh, I boy. remember the thing that I got like really stuck on. <laughs> And I talked about this with Max was um, so the scene subculture is a youth subculture that emerged during the early 2000s in the United States from the pre-existing emo subculture. Mm -hmm. uh, members of the scene subculture are referred to as scene kids, <laughs> scene stirs or trendies. And <laughs> I want to meet the person who came up with the name trendies. Probably some like 40 year old journalist some who Sean had to write Hannity something. Tucker. Some Fox News fuck probably did. Yeah, some someone conservative who just doesn't like kids at all. Um, also, yeah, to answer just... the question, I did not go through a scene phase, but I was, I was in those circles. Yes, I just I. <laughs> I also love the scene subculture lost popularity. However, since 2019, there's been movements that have given it a revival. No, that's just called time is a flat circle, and so is trends. Hmm. But yeah. We're just entering the thing where the 2000s are becoming the the, the nostalgic trend. Yeah. I don't like it. But yeah, I actually, while leaning towards one subculture or another, I never had one where I went through an entire phase it was that allowed people to visually put me in it. So, yeah. Uh, it, you so... never had a ska phase with some checkerboards? Nope. Oh, I, I love no Scar. Fun. I love Scar. And uh, if you played the song at my uh, go-to club, I was uh, one of the crazier ones on the dance floor. But you couldn't tell uh, from me while still standing at the bar with a beer in a hand. He played trumpet. He's a Scar fan. I, uh, oh yeah. I, I didn't. Play, uh, that's the sad thing. I discovered Scar after I stopped playing the trumpet. Otherwise, that would have been. Relearn the hell. trumpet just to play Scar music. Is, my neighbors will be very happy about that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I oh, guess no, here we the have the weird ferret. The weird ferret owners playing trumpet again. All right, so uh, let's go to the FMK because we've been going on a while. Yeah. So. Ask Awkward, as much we as we love to speak in chat, there's always that spoken phrase of silence is golden. So let's bring the noise down and zip those lips as we follow this phrase for fuck, marry, kill, silent protagonists. I, I, like, the, I like the fact that Enigma changed it because I was like, I don't think one of the characters is known by the guest. So we have Adult Link from Legend of Zelda. Thank you for specifying. Yeah, for clarifying. <laughs> Waluigi from Mario. Wah. Is he silent protagonist? I I, yeah, I guess silent as in they just make he's a, a noise. protagonist or silent, but he's in the list. <laughs> you you know what? We're gonna deal with it. And then Doom guy from Doom. But what about Gordon Freeman? I mean, he is a cliche silent protagonist, the, the, the one that even gets called out in his own game for being a silent protagonist. Uh, look, we can critique Enigma for his, for his FMK stuff later. Also, I'm just going to put, do just in case, um, since I feel like Doomguy is probably the least known, there really? is the aesthetic of Doomguy right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, in, just in case, just in case. Because, uh, I mean, I've, I've only played Doom a few times. I but, have my answer. Yeah, Joe, please, <laughs> you, you, please, uh, you tell have... us and why. Uh, exactly. Spin your tale of your romance, murder, and lust. Okay, so, uh, so in order, fuck, marry, kill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fuck, mm -hmm. doom guy. Why? Why? 
I I was working over that in my head, but honestly, it came down to fuck. Just look at him. <laughs> I mean, God. yeah. Look, even his armor has abs. Look at that goddamn physique. Look at that I, unit. I, also, I feel like I feel like with how much killing and just violence he's been through, he would want things to just be gentle for a little bit, and that's okay. And it can be. <laughs> that, 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 that's why he goes uh, hunting back to Isabella. Yeah, he just wants go. to he just wants to be taken care of, and I can do that for him for thirty minutes to an hour. Do, do, um, doom guy, uh, the uh, romance, a lovely, uh, lustful evening with uh, emphasis on aftercare. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, and then now Mary, who are you going to marry? Uh, Link, adult mm -hmm. Link, because he's 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 breaking a lot of clay pots. He's getting a lot of rupees. But he's always out adventuring, so he's gonna have to send that back home. Um, oh, damn it. And I'm fine with your I <laughs> gold digger answer. Damn it! Oh, oh, Joe, you, you will live never. Alone. Huh? <laughs> this guy might die, and then all the rupees are mine. You're um, gonna have those uh, those Joe. widow robes that are like the really long ones with exactly. the feathers at exactly. the end. <laughs> Joe, I have bad news for you. You are no never going to be back uh, invited back on the show. Keyframe, no. Key, key, key no, no, not even that. He will never invite you back because you are being competition for her as the one who always picks the gold digger answer. My marrying <laughs> answer is usually me figuring out how Bas to benefit myself. Yeah, the basically most what you just did. <sighs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, that's. Me Why and Joe are you... cut from similar cloth sometimes. So. Now, I probably shouldn't say what I'm about to say, but I'll oh. say it because my fiance is not watching. I am getting married later this year, but I was going to say, why else would you get married <laughs> if it's not going to benefit you in some way? There, there you go. <laughs> but why are you going to kill Waluigi? <laughs> it honestly <laughs> is stab. more of a process of elimination. I had the other uh -huh. two first where I was like, yep, those two make sense for theirs. And I just... I, I don't have anywhere else to put. I don't want to. It it would be it would be that image of the guy crying while he's holding the gun, but I'd have to do. I'll do it. I mean, Waluigi, just stand still. You're not in that many Nintendo games, anyways. So just, it's just like, mice and men him. <laughs> like, yeah, he wasn't even like in Smash for a bit, so like it's fine. Tell me about Mario Tennis, Waluigi. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, the there you go. I can't look at you. Um, wow. I'm pretty. I didn't go. Did I go? Chat, did I go last last I week? I believe you did because I had to go second, which forced me to still make a decision for uh, the setup. I was kind of hoping to be last last week because then I could have just rolled with whatever I got. Oh, well, okay. Then I get to go second this week. Yes. Haha. -ha. Yeah, I don't know how to make this a fuck over thing. They're all, in general, <laughs> not the most ideal couplings. So, okay, so, you married adult Link, <laughs> you fuck Doom guy, you killed Waluigi. Okay, okay so. seriously, what you need, what you need for yourself, you need to have Try a little... Dry erase board ba basically, a dry erase board with a little bit of a rotating bit in the middle. The rotating uh -huh. bit is probably like a magnet, which has fuck, marry, and kill written on it. Then you can just write the three names around it, and then you all you have to do is turn it. <laughs> turn the magnet. I okay. think you're having such a hard time because I chose the right answer. Yeah, you chose what I <laughs> would have done. Correct answers. All right, so I'm going to marry Waluigi. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to marry Waluigi besides my vested interest of you getting stuck with the fuck answer. Um, I, I, you know what? the worst one. Uh... <laughs> That's okay. He's the most unconventional, I would say. But no, see, I'm going to marry Waluigi because I think he always knows he's second place. Let me explain. Like, I feel like with, with marriage, sometimes you lose your sense of individuality. You lose your sense of self because you're always viewed as this unit. So you have to do everything together. But I think he would understand that I'm the main character of my life. And he won't get mad if I get invited to Smash and he doesn't. 
So I, I'm doing it so I can still keep my autonomy. I feel like Waluigi would respect my own autonomy. Uh, I mean, he wouldn't say that in that eloquent of a way. He'd probably just go, wah. <laughs> but, I, you know. I, I, I hate to break it to you. Uh, but basically, you went from the gold digger answer, which is the ultimate reaching answer, to the settler answer. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. if, you, if you can't strike gold, you gotta be a settler. Settle in the gold town. Uh, but look, if I have my own autonomy, then I can go and gold dig elsewhere. Like, uh, By like, fucking, yeah. like fucking Link. Because here's the thing. He breaks a lot of clay pots. He's got a lot of rupees. He, he, he wants and he, you want him to play uh, to break your clay pot if you get what I mean. Here's the thing. I mean, look, the guy gets gets a lot. He go he goes around, and it, it, <laughs> he goes ha ha ha. He would probably at least be very responsive in the sack. And he's got Navi with him. So, you know, Navi oh, can God. give him some pointers on what to do. <laughs> so, Blank, like, listen. Blank, listen. Go are, a little to the left. Your answers are all cursed today. But here's also the thing. Here's also the thing. Because I'm going to incorporate a little bit of of continuity into this. Mm -hmm. If I'm fucking him and and everything let's let's go to legend of zelda 2 logic because we know that him getting that health boost in that one house in legend yep, of zelda 2 that, was, that a was a brothel i'm the lady which means that i can probably just while he's asleep after the fuck fest i steal some rupees that joe won't get <laughs> i got plenty yeah, yeah so you, can you know what those i get i get my services the and there's my gold above. digger answer i'm going to take link's money in exchange for some uh, some services from someone who's probably more conventionally attractive than waluigi <laughs> and how am i going to kill doom guy uh hmm. yeah good luck have you tried summoning an army of demons directly from hell i'm pretty sure that that gets everybody i, I don't think he could survive that fair no and like <laughs> he's look, literally look. infamously known for surviving hordes and hordes of demons directly from hell i think yes he, but think i've seen people shittily play doom eternal it is possible for him to die even if he respawns because that's the thing all these characters die and respawn there is no death <laughs> so i can here's the thing i don't think he would mind in this reality i kill him and he just come back is he so canonically think... responding, or is this a game mechanic? I think it's a game mechanic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, he's so not I, like I... Uh, the, the kid in Hades or the dude in Bioshock who canonically respawn. Guys, we're saying who we're... I literally said I would marry Waluigi for autonomy, and I'm fucking Link for money. You think I care about narrative <laughs> versus game mechanic? Uh, this is a yes and and my yes and is yes and McCain mechanic means he'll come back so what does it matter if i kill him i'll stab him he's got little arm things i could just grab it and go because at the end of the day he's still a person so you know I he mean, got blood and i can the, make the blood go away i was about to say between the three of them he is probably the least of a person and the most yeah. of an animal Anyways, True. okay. Anyway, so so Max, this is yes. now it's your combination. Um Okay, uh I am going to kill Link because hey, he's a computer game character and he can't just uh, uh, respawn with a fairy. Uh no. Um Oh, this is I, I this is actually why why kill Link? I mean, he's a menace. He's a menace to society, honestly. Because you love Ganondorf. You'd kill him because you love Ganon. Oh, yeah, you mm. look at that big you hate monster. Okay, like, you okay. Hate okay. Here's the thing. Moosh took the gold digger answer for marriage. Yeah. He took the gold digger answer for uh, fucking. 
I guess it's yeah. on me to take the gold digger answer for uh, <laughs> you're for, gonna for kill killing. him and loot his corpse. Yeah, I, 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 no, I'm, 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 and steal his wallet. I, I, I'm not. Also, it's always about Link being the victim of the gold digging. I only now notice, but but Man's no, the one with money. No, he 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 is, he he probably doesn't have as many rubies on him. But no, I I, I like your idea, Moosh. I just take the bribery from uh, or, or, or the uh, the bounty that Ganondorf puts out for Link. So. Mm. Yeah, killing him for the money. And Kill him and take his identity, and then Zelda will give you all the money. Okay. Oh, Zelda might Perfect. give me something else. Uh, anyways, oh. it's adult Link, so therefore Zelda's also adult. Excuse me, princess. I mean, chic. Uh, that, that's uh, a, that's an true. outfit. That's true. She can uh, get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I am going to marry Doom Guy, obviously, because adventure i mean we all have seen this uh, the, all the memes surrounding doom and uh, doom guy and isabella hooking up and yeah he is a great demon killer but he's also a fun guy to just chill have a picnic catch some butterflies so he has a completely other side to him which is totally canon and not just a meme on the internet and yeah that's somebody to to uh, spend the rest of your time with no huh? like uh you, you, you can... you'll know that you won't die from a demon because he'll just also go... That. Yeah, yeah. Also that, also that. For the uh, maybe unlikely event of a sudden demon invasion, I have the Doom but Guy right zero. here on my side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, and, okay, yeah. so tell us why are you going to have such carnal relations with Waluigi? Very, very easy. Oh, I only yeah, need sure. one word for it. What? And repeat it very often. Wah, 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 wah. I thought you were going to say mustache. I thought the word was going to be mustache. Mustache. Look at that mustache. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can get quite a... I don't. I don't know what's the. I know that there's something, some kind of sex act. I. I guess Odie said it best. Awkward. Yeah, awkward. A and Y and Key say hi to the people in the chat. The memes are seen on this live stream as they talk about random crap. It's time for awkward guys. It's the awkward. It's the awkward. Random guests and funny gags on the awkward It's the awkward. Guests. It's the awkward. Artwork and analysis, whoa, whoa, whoa. which you do not want to 